Hi, today I'm going to talk about a question someone asked me, which is that uh, can someone do freelancing in quantitative finance? Well, yes, <clears throat> you can do freelancing, but it's very important to understand, um, you know, the, the different aspects of freelancing in quant finance. It's quite different from freelancing in other areas, right? So it's very, very important that you, you know, watch this video till the end because uh, it's quite different actually, right? Uh, I see quite a number of people very interested in doing freelancing, just not working for any one em employer, but just, you know, working for uh, a number of clients. Uh, that's quite lucrative as well uh, in many fields, but it's certainly uh, very different in the quant finance area, right? So you need really need to understand uh, w what the differences are. So first of all, yes, uh, you can do freelancing and make a very good living. In fact, I know many freelancers um, who are doing extremely well in, in quant finance and they have been working as freelancer for, you know, more than a decade, more than a decade actually. And uh, they love to be uh, freelancers. They simply don't want to work uh, full time for any uh, any company, right? <clears throat> Having said that, there are several challenges that you will face as a freelancer, right? One big challenge is that, uh, right? It depends on where you are located, right? Freelancing opportunities are not available everywhere. Um, I have never met really a freelancer who is working as a quant in India. Maybe things have changed since I left India. Uh, it's been quite a quite a while now, but uh, I have met so many in Europe, okay, uh, in continental Europe, but also in London. It's, uh, especially in London, where you know there's a very big uh, freelancing community uh, for quants there, right? Uh, very extreme, very well paid. Um, you know, you you can make really good money working as a freelancer, right, in various area, areas of quant finance especially uh, people working for you know uh, large investment banks they make quite good money uh, simply because you know you work as a freelancer that like the project runs for you know years so it makes you feel like you're working full time but you're getting paid more than the full time employees because freelancers get money per hour basis and it's normally quite high right you know let me tell you a number right in in london you could be making anywhere between 800 pound to let's say you know 2000 pound per day uh, depending on your skill set, obviously, but that's the rate for quants in London. In continental Europe, it's a bit less, but it's also quite uh, lucrative, right? Uh, but um, rarely have I, or perhaps I've never met anyone working as freelancer in quant finance area uh, from India, right? Uh, things may have changed in you know in the last eight to nine years but when i was working there I, i've never met anyone right so if you want to work in quant finance you really have to work full time there right <clears throat> um so like 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 if you really want to work as, as a freelancer right uh then how can you do that right if you're best out of europe on uk or even us then it's certainly possible that you know work as a freelancer um right if you cannot work as a freelancer uh, right away right directly from from university right you really need to get some experience first full-time experience or internship experience and then you can work as a freelancer uh, or a contractor right in europe they also call it uh call these people as contractors right you and it's very lucrative actually money is quite lucrative hence a lot of people uh, want to work as contractors um, so it's very important that, you know, you get some experience first, right? You cannot get uh, uh, contracting opportunities uh, without having any full-time experience, right? Uh, so that's very important. You really need to be best out of these countries, US, uh, Europe, UK, um, or maybe Singapore, Australia, these or Canada, these places. You need to, ha need to have the work permit, actually. Uh, you already should be a citizen or you are a permanent resident <clears throat> because uh, in, in this country, right, uh, you cannot work as a contractor uh, and, and, and still being sponsored by your employer. There are some people who are quite lucky with that. I, have, I, I know people who are working as contractors and yet, uh, you know, their visas or work permit have been, you know, sponsored by their respective employer. But not everybody is lucky with that, right? Not many companies will be willing to do that especially in uk you probably won't find in in europe 
in continental Europe, Netherlands, Germany, France, uh, things are a bit different. In Poland as well, it's a bit different, but it, it, in the UK, it, it's practically impossible. But if you work, go there, you know, uh, on a spouse visa, for example, if a wife or your husband working uh, and you are on a spouse visa, a dependent visa, then you can uh, certainly work as a contractor. You don't need a sponsorship then, right? So that's quite uh, very lucrative. And if you want to explore, go ahead in doing that. But can you work directly from India as a freelancer? Uh, no, uh, for a variety of reasons. Uh, a lot of people, uh, because finance is very, you know, secretive, right? It's, you know, secrecy is very important, right? You really need to uh, know actually who is working with you, right? When a bank or a trading firm, investment firm is sending work to an offshore location like India, right? They you have offshore development centers, you know, people have to come there and work there. Things have changed since COVID. Now people even work from home, right? Um, and in my time, you know, I remember, you know, people were not given in laptops, right? You really have to come to office to work uh, there, right? And, and 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 there are a lot of regulations around how what you, you can bring to the office and so on and so forth. Things have changed so so much since Corona. So probably there are some opportunities, uh, you know, uh, the freelancing opportunities. But uh, so, uh, but I'm I'm not uh, aware of that. <clears throat> okay. Um, so somebody sending work to India will not allow you to let's say work on part time basis, right? Uh, they will ex or that company will expect you to be a full time employee and sign the agreement, uh, non disclosure ag agreement, and uh, your background check will be done. And, right, a lot of that will happen. Only then you know that company will allow you to work for for that company, and then. Uh, you know there will be some uh, regulations around what you can do and can't do right uh, all those things um, are difficult actually if you are a contractor you are a freelancer right and hence there's simply not op offshore opportunity in in contracting space although uh, what i've heard is that um, in the software development side or probably on the quant development side there's some trading firm who are hiring freelancers um, you're not going to be developing models, but you will be building softwares for uh, model implementation or for uh, trading purpose, right? So for that kind of work you can get. And I, I know people who are doing that kind of work based out of India, but then these are not core point positions, right? Uh, you can't even get a uh, risk sort of positions uh, based out of India and, and work as, as a freelancer. That's also not very much i think quite difficult um someone asked me that uh how about uh you know finding work on upworks and these freelancing sites right um i don't know much about these sites to be honest uh, i i probably i barely seen actually i've i've seen upwork uh, in fact i do have a profile i never use i never worked there but i did create one long long ago and in those days, uh, yes, uh, there was some, uh, you know, work posted, but most of these are like academic uh, projects. The projects that uh, were posted on, on Upwork, on other sites, the most academic finance projects, but are not by a big trading firm or an investment firm or, or a bank or insurance company or a fintech. Maybe fintech. I think this, you know, startups, you know, because obviously they don't have money to hire full-time employees. Some startups they do hire, uh, you know, freelancers from abroad uh, for co uh, yeah, because they're cost cost-effective and um, also because you know they want them for short-term purpose. Um, all right, and um, yeah. So the bottom line here is that uh, it's quite lucrative. There's no doubt about it. But you really need to have, be in uh, either Europe or in the US or Canada, right? Otherwise, you simply cannot do freelancing uh, or contracting uh, from anywhere else. Uh, there may be exceptions, like maybe in some uh, places you still can get opportunity, for example, in Middle East or in Singapore. But um, I think most contractors have, have, have you know, come across. Uh, they are either based out of London or some other parts of Europe. Or in the US, right? Uh, how about people uh, from India where they have been working as a freelancer? Yes, yes, I know many actually, many you know really good quants uh, who used to work as VPs or executive director in some big banks. 
later on moved uh, to become uh, become contractors right and they're making good money uh, it's quite lucrative um, right it's also a bit risky because you know uh, you may may not have work all the time but because it you know it's so lucrative in terms of remuneration um, it's worth taking that risk right uh, another thing I would like to share with you is that um, you know, if you really want to work as a freelancer from India, I think the best thing to do is is to register a comp company and and make a team actually, right? As an individual, it's very difficult to get work from abroad, but uh, if if you become a team, right, uh, then you can uh, you can pitch to the client and you can get work. Uh, I know some people have done that. There are many uh, boutique uh, risk and quant consulting firms based out of India, uh, in Delhi, but also in Bangalore and Mumbai. Uh, these firms do get work from European banks, uh, investment firms, uh, also you know banks from Middle East and Singapore and so on. Uh, it's quite possible, but as an individual, it's very difficult. Just you know build a small team. Uh, but you right if you want to impress your client you want to pitch to a client uh, for work i think it's very important that you already have quality experience in uh, in in this field otherwise as a fresher you cannot uh, get the work from uh, from this company right so in order to be uh, a good consultant right uh, you really need to have experience knowledge and experience in this field right you cannot simply become a consultant uh, freelancing consultant right out right after your edu uh, education right a master's degree or, or bachelor degree or phd right so that's uh, possible and i uh, you know during covid times actually some of my ex colleagues actually started a consulting firm uh, based out of india uh, they're doing quite well um, i think they have made a team of about 20 to 30 i think 30 people already which is quite impressive um so it's it's not entirely freelancing for them i would say but they have started a consulting firm so in a way they're you know not working directly for for uh, banks but getting work uh from these banks and delivering uh, delivering the work from india so that's uh, quite possible right that's one really good way of you know also making good money because uh, yeah it's the arbitrage opportunity that exist right most of the IT companies are doing that you know getting paid in dollar and paying your employees in Indian rupees so that's something you know many people are doing and you can certainly do that in the quant finance uh, area as well right all right if you have further questions uh, do not hesitate to reach out to me as always thanks for watching see you next time